here we go. Landed on a gold mine. Landed on a gold mine. Here he is! Oh, he's got a big old boot on him. Oh wow, it goes way back in here, everybody. Not gonna lie, it is a little freaky in here, everybody. What's up everybody and welcome back to another addicted fishing video. Today, as you can see, is another dreary, wet, flooded day in the Pacific Northwest. And all of our rivers and all of our fun activities that we like to go do are pretty much screwed at the moment. But you know what? I'm gonna stay positive and we're gonna go have fun anyways. What I'm gonna do today, I'm not actually gonna tell you because I want it to be a surprise. But we're gonna go fish a muddy, flooding, blown out river for some steelhead. And there's a couple of methods that I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do today that actually help you and can actually make this kind of fishing easy and fun. If you can go out and find a good spot to do it, we're gonna actually plunk today. I, I'm gonna give the secret away a little bit. But we're gonna go plunk, we're gonna have fun. It's just gonna be me and Little. It's gonna be a really cool adventure today, so stick around and let's see what kind of trouble we can get ourselves into today. Did a big no no, everybody. Almost did a major no no. Drove out, left the home without the coon shrimp. Whew, that could have been bad. That could have been very, very bad. God. Here we go. Okay, we are packed, ready, and underway. I'm gonna go check a few different spots here that I wanna try to plunk today. And what plunking means is basically you throw your stuff out there on the bottom and you sit and wait. It's, it's a great method of fishing if you have really high water or if you have a big body of water where there's a lot of fish moving by. And today, we kind of have both. We have big, super high water and we're fishing big bodies of water. So I'm gonna go down, I'm gonna check out the Columbia River. It's all dependent on the tide there. We have to have an outgoing tide so we have current to spin our spin glows. Um, I'm gonna go check the Columbia first, then I'm gonna move up and check a couple of different areas and see if we can find ourselves a, a spot to plunk in a nice area to, to cook us some dinner, so. Wish me luck. I'm gonna try not to get run over. Pull out on the freeway here. Let's go catch some fish. We're here. And it looks pretty good. It's definitely a big mud pit. Almost uh, virtually no clarity at all, <clears throat> which is kind of the idea. We got a lot of big, like flashy presentations. We got some stinky baits to put on here. And we're gonna basically do whatever we can to try to get these fish's attention. So let's get out, let's get rigged up. Let's get a line in the water. All right, so the setup I'm gonna use today is something a little bit different. It's not gonna be your, your classic, just single spingle setup. I'm gonna use a double setup. And that's mainly twice, twice the options for them, basically. Twice the amount of stuff that they're gonna be able to see as they're swimming by, especially with the super dirty water like we have today. And I'm actually gonna use something a little bit different today. It's called a smile blade. Okay, so the way this thing goes, first order of business. Gonna get three of these three-way swivels out. One, two, three. First one's gonna go right here on the top, and this is where my first lure is gonna go. So right from my main 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 braided line, straight to the first three-way swivel. Okay. So in between each piece, or in between each swivel, rather, I'm gonna go with a 15-pound test. I'm basically just gonna make, as you can already kind of see what's happening here, I'm gonna go swivel, leader, swivel, and then leader down to my weight. And then I'm gonna have my main lines with, with my spinning glows and stuff coming off of this little pieces of swivel right here. So let's get this set up. Now for the bait, I brought coon shrimp and I brought some spawn sacks and so what I'm gonna do is on my bottom hook I'm gonna go with a spawn sack just because I have that flotation there and I want that to be nice and stinky up off the bottom ooh that's a good little spawny there that's a big one now this one's pretty easy too because we're just gonna hang that spawn sack right off the end of the hook don't have to do anything special or, or pretty with it I'm gonna run that right through there like this and that should be good to go 
I'm actually gonna throw a little little loop around that just to kind of hold it up on my hook there. Beautiful. So this is my bottom setup. I got the big spin glow, bead, and a big old spawny. Top one, I'm gonna go with the coon shrimp. Okay, we are so close to fishing, I can almost taste it. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna slide down here. I'm gonna stick my rod holder in the ground. And picking the spot to cast can probably be sometimes the hardest part of all of, of this process. Cause look at this thing. It's almost probably a quarter mile across the river here. Tons of structure, tons of things going on. And I can see down here, I have this nice this bend basically, which is gonna create a little bit of a, like a coffer dam for these fish. It's gonna stick out in the middle of the river and these fish are gonna be able to catch that inside current and follow it up. So a lot of the times, and, and what I'm gonna do here is not cast very far. So it's probably about 10, 15 feet. So I'm thinking right about here looks good for my rod holder. Let's get this thing in the ground. Let's get our rod out. fishing everybody we are fishing it's official no pun intended we are a fishing so I had this up here just like this like it's very important to get a nice bend in the rod make sure that thing's tight without pulling yourself up off the bottom as you can tell again I'm not very far out there I'm about four to six feet off the bottom kind of riding this ledge that you see kind of coming up you can see where these fish can grab this little eddy line here pull in come up river and end up stopping right here in front of us. So, let's see what happens. Well, status update. It's raining. Conveniently, I can park right next to the rod and watch it. But one thing they don't teach you in plunking school is that it's really boring by yourself. <laughs> I must say, it's definitely a method of fishing that is a lot more fun if you got some buddies, build a big fire, cook some good food. We're gonna do both of those things anyways, but. Sometimes it kind of sucks being by yourself. Good thing I got littles. Is it hot? It's crazy, guys. We have this big pineapple express that's moved into the Northwest and it's like 60, 65 degrees. So it's raining, it's kind of muggy, it's hot. And I'm really, really hoping it kind of turns those fish on. So nonetheless, I'm relaxed, I'm enjoying myself. Got a rod working. I got my snackle box here in the front seat. Let's see what we got in there today. Got some nerds. Minis. Mm. Mm -hmm. Well done, Willy Wonka. Well done. Big chewy nerds. Sour edition. Loving it. <sighs> Good way to spend a rainy day. Okay, it's been about an hour. It's time for a bait check. I'm gonna run down here. Go my rod in, see what's going on, maybe replace my thing. And I'm, but really, honestly, I think <clears throat> I've, I've seen that times out plunking, and I have not done this a lot, everybody. You know, Marlon and some of my other close friends, the Cameron, are a lot more experienced at doing this plunking stuff, but I'm, learn, I'm learning from some of the best. So, the information that I've seen so far is a lot of times when you are out plunking, you work to certain points of the tide, <clears throat> and if you're not catching fish and they're not moving through and people around you aren't catching fish, odds are one, you're either your timing's off or two, you're in the wrong spot and you're in the wrong traveling lane. So I'm probably gonna give this spot another hold bait, so probably another hour. And then I'm gonna relocate somewhere a little bit different, uh, maybe a different river system. I don't know yet, we'll have to find out. We might just throw the towel on the plunking all together and go trout fishing, I don't know. So let's reel this thing in. Let's see if anything is weird or tangled or if I've lost any more of my life I'm never getting back. I'm gonna walk out here to the edge so I don't get my stuff snagged. I'm gonna race it fast. Let me out here. Uh, well, the the first bait was fishing pretty good the whole time, the lower bait, which is good. But obviously, some stuff got stuck up here in the smile blade. In the old smile blade, and she got a little tangy poo. A little tangled up here. So another thing you can do on days like today, and especially <clears throat> when running certain kind of presentations like spinners and stuff, it can be really important that you wanna put a, a bead chain, like a three bead chain on your connection here on your swivel. But I was being lazy today and 
You see it bit me in the butt. This is why you do that. That bait's looking really good though. <clears throat> I think it'll still still rock for a little while here. Got those swinging nice. And we're back in action. Settled in right about there. And I do kind of like to have that downriver approach like that. Sometimes you get a little bit nicer spread with your stuff. It sits a little more evenly on the bottom rather than being straight out and having a big belly in it. So when that fish grabs it and takes off, it's already got a good angle and you're fighting that thing well. And it's hooked good in the face and hopefully not gonna come off. And it's pouring again. Story of my life. Back to the truck we go. Starting to be some serious logage floating down the river. The big tree right here, the big one over here across the river. Gotta keep my eye out. There's a lot of debris coming down the river, you can see. Pretty gnarly out here. It is dumped, I don't know, it rained for 12 hours straight, I swear. It just poured the other night, two nights ago. And everything, absolutely everything is blown out in the muddy. This might turn into a couple day mission. I'm not sure yet. But so far it's peaceful, it's beautiful, it's warm. And I really hope we catch a fish. Well, it's been about an hour, but I've decided not to leave. I'm gonna stick it out in this box. I've noticed as the tide started to go out, the low, the high tide stopped at four o'clock and it starts to go out from here on out. So it's four o'clock right now. And I can notice, that one, you can see the speed of the water's changed quite a bit. It's been going by really fast. But two, I've noticed it's got a little bit clearer since that water started moving out. So it's probably a lot of that water that was pushed back up here that was all muddy from all this rain is now getting sucked back out and it's a little bit clearer. So I'm gonna stay, I'm gonna cook, but yeah, it sounds hollow, doesn't it? I didn't defrost my meat before I left the house like I knew I should have. So it's ice cold. It's still frozen, completely solid, but I got a little trick, an old trick my dad taught me. And that is, the exhaust manifold defroster, everybody. <laughs> Duh, why not? There's gotta be some nice heat coming off the exhaust manifold over here. Let me crawl up here and see if I can feel her out. All right, that looks pretty hot, awfully hot. I'm gonna stick it right up here, right on that, where all that warm, warm air is coming up. Oh yeah, that'll work. That should work. Okay, here we go. Okay, well as I wait for that to defrost, I'm gonna start getting my other ingredients for my sandwich ready. And this is one, if you guys haven't already seen the Stay Fishy video where I did the same recipe, I haven't done it on Addicted yet, so I wanna make sure to share it with all you guys out there so you could see it and, and learn to love it and go cook it for yourself on there. But it's really easy, you only need a couple ingredients. It's easy to throw in the cooler, everything can roll around and everything actually lasts quite a while. Uh, but it's a cheese steak, and I'm gonna use elk steaks, but you can use any kind of beef. Hell, you could even use chicken on this or some sort of vegetarian vegetarian style if, if you don't like eating meat. But here we go. Where's my cutting board? There it is. I found it, everybody. Going around the truck. All right, so what I'm gonna do here for my cheese steaks, I got red pepper, delish. I got a couple different kinds of cheese. I got Jimmy Jack cheese, I got some pepper jack, and I got some aged cheddar. And that is basically all I'm gonna need. Ooh, this aged cheddar is good. Okay, great cute boy. Cutest man in the West, right here. There he is, hey you. So I'm gonna go down and get a fire started. I wanna cook this dish over the fire so that I can get that really nice smoky flavor coming up from that smoke rolling over the edge of the pan and stuff. So let's go down here, let's get our flames going. And one thing I must say I'm noticing already is that the temperature is going down quickly too. It's it's actually way colder. I bet it's gone down probably seven, eight degrees since I've been here, uh, which when I started this morning, it was probably 60, 65 degrees. So the temperature's dropping, the witching hour is almost upon us and I cannot wait to put some meat in this pan and scarf it down. Okay, let's pull the fire. Perfect. Pretty soft. Malleable now. 
Okay, let's get this thing cooked up. Time to cook, everybody. E freaking haw. This is one of my favorite recipes, too. So, I'm gonna get my steak out of the package. It is, a, it is still frozen a little bit, but that is okay. You're gonna see what I mean by it actually making it a little bit easier to, to cut. Mmm, -hmm. yummy. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is gonna make nice long slices, and you see it's like it's all crispy almost. I'm trying to get these pieces as thin as possible. Yummy. Throw a big chunk of butter in there too. to help it cook. Got some garlic. A little bit of Montreal in there. Let's go get you cooking, everybody. Now we're talking. Now we're cooking with fire. Yeehaw! Yeehaw, everybody. What a glorious day this has been. I love turning a bad day into a good day of fishing. Any day is a good day of fishing, honestly. Especially when you get to bring people along, show them some new things, give people and I a reason to go out and, and have more fun in the outdoors, even on a really nasty, rainy day. Boy, that looks good. Chop some of these pieces up a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yes. Son. Look at us go. Mm, man, that smells good, everybody. So one crazy thing I'm gonna do here next is I'm gonna cut up a bit of this aged cheddar. Just like this. I kind of get it to crumble a little bit. And I'm gonna throw this aged cheddar in there. This extremely aged cheddar. You can tell how brittle and nice it is. Really, really good flavor. Kind of a earthy, milky flavor. I don't know, very creamy style of cheese if you've never tried it. Go into go into your local market and ask for an aged cheddar. It is I put it on everything, honestly. It's one of my very favorite cheeses out there. So we're gonna saute. In this cheese, and then we're going to add another cheese when we put it into our bread. Okay, for my last trick, I'm going with the Ghost Cream Chili Jam. I was just talking with this guy on the phone the other day, really cool guy named Matt, and uh, we met him at the sportsman shows the last couple years. And I was just talking to him on the phone the other day, talking about maybe doing a collaboration for our own sauces so i want to see some comments below drop some some ideas some some thoughts some recipes or basically just flavors that you want to see us make this is a chili garlic jam very spicy but absolutely delicious i'm thinking of maybe going a little bit less on the spice factor keep up the flavor like he does but it really does add an incredible flavor to every meal especially something like this with steak or fish or anything like that so check these guys out absolutely delicious and we're about to eat. Final flippy dippy. You know, I don't really want to overcook those peppers and stuff. So it's kind of turning to mush. Kind of want that little bit of a tenderness to that pepper to go along with the tenderness of the steak. So let's get up here. Let's get our bread in the pan. Let's get our fixings on it. Let's start chowing. All right, so taste test. Whoa. That is freaking incredible. Absolutely delicious. Holy Christ. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here, I got my favorite sourdough bread. Lamb sourdough, absolutely delish if you've never tried it. And I'm just gonna do it real easy. I'm gonna do the cheater method. I'm gonna take my butter. I'm just gonna set it right in the pan and swirl it around until I get enough butter in the bottom of the pan. Normally I like to butter my toast first, but in this case, the butter's not quite warm enough or soft enough to be able to butter the toast. So one step at a time. Oh man, I can't wait to eat this. Why does everything keep going wrong? World, why is the everything keep going wrong on me? It's starting to rain now. 
Nice buttery layer there. I'm gonna go half stick of wet cheese. Real pro kitchen out here Look tonight, everybody. Real pro kitchen out here. Voila! Now I'm gonna do this. Do one of these. Uh-oh, missed the pan. Missed the pan already. And basically I'm just gonna have to build that on there because it's obviously way too much. Get everything placed on there real nice slack. Just like that. Right around the top. Melty goodness, indeed. I'm gonna throw our other piece of bread on top. Smash her down, kind of panini style here. And wait for that stuff to melt. What do you think of the elk steaks? Pretty good? Hasn't dropped a one yet. Good catches. Well, that was a good piece. Nah, actually, I can't even begin to tell you how good this is. So, while we're sitting here waiting, I'm trying to figure out really what we should do tomorrow. I think we're going to turn this into a two day long video. It's going to be, well, nap alarm. Never fails. I think we're going to turn this into a two day long video. I don't know if we're going to try to fish for salmon and steelhead tomorrow. Today was obviously a bust. We fished for six hours or so plunking. I've still got my line wet over here. And it's not really what I'm best at. This isn't my favorite kind of fishing. It's it's a good kind of fishing, one, if you're with a lot of friends, and two, if, if there's a lot of fish moving through. So I don't know if either one of those are going to happen. I don't think I have any friends that can fish tomorrow, and I don't know how many fish are coming through here, so we may switch um, may switch angles to trout. We may try and go chase some other species, whether it's a trout or bass or heck, I don't know. we got to do something different, though, because today didn't work. But we're going to enjoy this meal. I'm going to sit here and brainstorm on it, and we're going to figure something out to do. Let's do it. That's looking good. Flip that bad boy out. Oh, yeah, baby. Look at that melty, cheesy, amazing goodness. Mmm. Those red peppers on there are such a nice flavor. Add in with that chili sauce, the nice gaminess of the elk. Oh, a little bit of Montreal kind of seasoning and coming in the end there. Phenomenal. Mm. Well, time to wrap the day up. I think it's about time we reel the rod in. Got this beautiful haze starting over the river. Might sit here, watch the sun go down the rest of the way. Enjoy the last bit of my fire. And then start brainstorming. It's times like this where fishermen, I think, can learn the most. <coughs> super high water conditions, super low water. The, having those adverse conditions that you have to kind of fight through to go out and find where there might be fish or honestly wherever it's just fishable. Like there's there's very few places around right now that I could even make a cast that's worthwhile. Um, or that would be fun even for a video. So <clears throat> I might plant something in the mountains. I might go to a lake. I might do something crazy. I don't know yet. Maybe we just go whitewater rafting. That's probably what I'd rather do, honestly. What do you think? What do you think there, mister? What do you think we should do, mister? He doesn't know. He says, I don't know, Dad, the rivers are blown. But it's been a good day. Great way to spend a, a rainy, crappy day. I will say that much, and I can't wait for tomorrow. The next morning. Oh, well, it's another day and another adventure. And I'm telling you, it is still just as wet out there. Let's take a quick looky-see. But I have some ideas. I brainstormed last night. I talked to some people. You know some people who robbed some people. It's still wet. It's still raining. And I looked on the graphs this morning and all the rivers are still going up. So only one thing left to do, and that's adventure forward. We're gonna go check out a couple of small streams that I really been wanting to look at when the water was this high. There's, there's potential to still catch fish in these, but I have special access to the very, very top echelons of these rivers. So we're gonna head up there. We're gonna see if we can find any success fishing today. But nonetheless, we're gonna eat some good food. We're gonna have an adventure, so let's do it. A little bit different rod selection here today. I'm gonna go with a couple steelhead rods. Oh, what do you know? What do you know? Jordan starts the morning out tangled. One eternity later. Okay, there we go. Oh, oh God, almost broke a rod. <sighs> nutty, it's just nutty out here.
starting to get pretty jacked. It always happens. This always happens to me every time I go steelhead fishing when conditions aren't good. Because steelhead fishing is a very hard style of fishing. You have to travel a long ways. You have to fish really hard. The conditions are gnarly. And so when they're not, you know, close to perfect, it's hard to want to spend the whole day going to do that. But every time I have that feeling and I'm acting like that when I wake up in the morning, I get to the river and I instantly just get jacked. So I cannot wait. We're on our way. We're getting closer. We're getting closer. Little's ready. You ready for fish? You ready for fish? Yes, he said. He said, yes, I am. I am, I am. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. All right. We're almost there. Let's see what the color is when we get there. I have no clue what it's going to look like, but it just started raining again. And we'll see. We'll see what conditions we have and if there's any fish there. We're almost there. Oh my God. Oh my God. We just by, went by this little creek coming across the road basically and it definitely was brown. So, but sometimes it doesn't matter. Sometimes there's a lot of fish and then we can catch the heck out of them no matter what the color is. We just gotta cast close to the bank. Close to the bank, tiny. First look, it's not bad. It is not bad at all. It is not bad at all. So this is what it looks like everybody. A rager, a full on rager, but that's okay. Like I said, the thing is when the rivers get like this, there's already fish here. And if you look at this, there's only one place to sit. It's like right there. So you just have to fish these things correctly when your conditions are like this. It's not that bad, honestly. It's up in the trees, but this is fishable. So let's go find ourselves a good spot. Let's get to fishing. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Just spotted a little inside sea midge. Come on back here. Oh yeah, right there. Right there, look at that. Look at that. That's fishy. Let's hit it. I don't even have to put my waders on for this one. I like it. Okay, I'm going with my slide float set up here. I'm gonna take my jig off because I think it's gonna be a worm game. These are gonna be big wild fish. They're gonna be hungry, they're gonna be mean. They're gonna wanna eat something. You guys are gonna laugh, but I'm pretty sure the worm I want is in the bottom of the cooler. Yep, it is. <laughs> it's where you store some leftover worms, I guess, in the cooler. That's it. Yeah! Sweet! Woo! Party! Peach on peach. Seems like the right color for this water. It's a very brown, like clear cut looking. Uh, uh, brown color. I like to call it clear cut because it comes from a lot of the sediment getting washed down out of out of logged areas, where, which you know it's necessary for humanity. But sometimes it messes up the color of the river. It brings a lot of silt down. Okay, there we go. The treachery. Exciting. I'm excited. That is very, very fishable. Oh my goodness. I got a lot more confidence now, everybody. It's kind of crazy. The hole has kind of changed since I've been here for, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes. And it's, it's starting to become more of like a swirl and a boil down below rather than that nice scene that was there before that's like surges of water. So I'm gonna try to spin it really quick. Then I might just hop back in the rig and uh, keep going up river. Again, I feel like I need to find some sort of clear water inlet to fish, um, just mainly to get some clear water in front of the fish. It's really not that bad of a color. And this worm stands out like a sore thumb in there. So I'm gonna keep moving up river. Well, well, we'll try a spinner. Try the spinner and then we'll move up river. Then we'll be good to go. Holy hell, 
It is wet out there, everybody. It's wet and the temperature is dropping, which I hope actually happens because it'll it'll make this water clear up faster over the next few days. We got some really cool collabs coming up. Our good buddy Taku might be coming out. Not gonna spoil alert or anything, but be on the lookout for some cool stuff there. And if you haven't already, go check out the new Stay Fishy videos. Stay Fishy Adventures is the other YouTube channel that we have now. So going over, it's just a little more of exactly what we're doing today. A little more traveling, a little more fun, a little more food, and little man and I running around adventuring the world. So onward to the next hole. Knee break. <laughs> That's embarrassing. <laughs> Here's a little creek coming in. Those culvert comes through and that's exactly the kind of stuff that these fish will come in and spawn in when the river gets like this so i don't want to fish in that little thing but i want to go down to where that dumps into the river which doesn't look like it's very far so i'm going to park i got to wait her up because i'm going to get absolutely soaked going through the brush and let's get down to the hole so we can find if there's a little little seam of clear water somewhere down there Okay, Whew, made it through the alders. Owie, only about 19 smacks in the face. So, did pretty well. A lot of elk track in here. Maybe we'll sneak up on some. One thing, when you're out doing this kind of hiking stuff by yourself, that can be really, really cool and really Wow, actually, squirrel moment. Look at this giant anthill. Crazy. Right in the base of an old hemlock. But it can be very smart a lot of times to follow game trails. Like you notice where I'm walking here. It doesn't, it's not necessarily beaten down, but you can tell that something is traveling on it. It's probably not humans. It's either Bigfoot or some sort of deer or elk or other wild animal that's you know, using that lane of travel. And it can help you get to and from where you're going safely because a lot of times, that's, I mainly follow Little through the woods and let him kind of lead the way because he'll usually find that safest and most navigable way down the down the bank. So, almost there. I can see the end of the line. Okay, we're looking good. Making our way last descent here down into this little creek. You can see this thing. It's, again, it's not dumping clear. Probably sloughing off on some clear cut up above, but the one, the main part is, oh, what do you smell, Little? It smells adventure. The one thing of it is it's clean, fresh water coming in here. And I can see this little eddy down here. It looks like a perfect little spot for these things. Okay, go across here, that line. Oh, alive, 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 alive. Look at this though, how gnarly. So much water. Little, look at little, it's like a little surf in that wave on that rock. Calabunga, dude. Ow, ow. So now this is what I'm talking about. This stuff is, it's popping today. I love this. I love coming down here and seeing all these huge waves. I and mean, look at those, that wave train out there sitting like four footers, you know, three and a half, four footers. It's a good class two all the way through there. And I wish I had the raft right now or the kayak. Where's all my kayaking buddies at? This is awesome. Sometimes rainy day hikes are the best. Little don't do it. Don't do it. I was scared him. Oh, don't do it. <laughs> Yeah. Well, we might have to get out of here. I can tell it is getting higher and it's getting dirtier. Sitting, chilling out by this big rapid here. Let's beat Cheeks back up to the truck. Let's go find another creek or river to go to, I don't know. so gross out everybody why mother nature why must you do this to us at the beginning of march okay let's see what happens here i have no clue my i don't have any service up here so i can't really see our uh, our location or the topo map of where we're at so kind of came unprepared but there's a road and i can hear the river so it's a good start beautiful wow Look at these radical trees through here. This is so neat. I'm really digging this hike. 
might be kind of a big pain in the butt getting out of here, but oh well. Not seeing any real fishable water, unfortunately. I don't know what we're gonna do. Too high, too high logs laying across the river, trees in the water, stuff's floating. Guess we got our workout. <sighs> cool day though. Let's get back to the truck. See if we can't find one more spot to go. Burger after getting your ass kicked on the river. But it was a good couple days. Look at this thing. Oh my god. Best gas station cheeseburger in the world. You're looking at it. So amazing. Well, everybody, I really hope you enjoyed this little adventure. It was two hard fought days of no fish, but getting exercise, going out and having fun, and getting to spend time in other nature, I'm never gonna complain about. If you guys want to see more fun videos just like you saw here today, go up here and click this link to this next video. Go down here, hit subscribe, turn those bells on, give this video a thumbs up and comment below. You can be the comment of the day, just like this person right here. Thanks so much for watching everybody. You stay fishy. We'll see you out there.